Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the shop. Today's video, I'm gonna be making some trailer stabilizing jacks for my trailer out here. Let me take you outside, we'll take a look at it and I'll show you my current situation. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so here's my current situation. First of all, I wanna start out by saying that my trailer is an ongoing project for me. I got this thing about nine months ago, permanently parked it in this spot. I have no intentions of moving it for a couple of years or using it for some other purposes. So I'm kind of permanently storing it here. And here's my situation. It comes with some stable, electric stabilizing jacks right here. You know, this is kind of a big feature they sold me on. They thought this was a, a, a good setup, I guess, versus manual ones. But uh, in all reality, these things don't really do too much. They just go down and hit the ground. They don't do much about uh, leveling or doing anything of the sort with the trailer. So I backed it up with uh, six bottle jacks. I've got three on this side and three on the other side. And um, my goal is not to, to get it completely off the ground, but to take some pressure off the, off the tires and get it level so it's stable all the time rather than when you're walking in the trailer, rocking back and forth. So the problem I'm having with these bottle jacks, as you can see one, the cylinder is starting to rust and that's the happening with all six of them and this isn't any good so i got to get these things out of here clean these cylinders up and store these things so i can use them properly so what i want to do and the other thing is they're losing when you when i jacked them up and leveled everything out over the course of about three weeks they start losing pressure and they start settling down and i'm having to get in here and rejack them up so i'm done with that so the, the plan is to, to make some, some screw jacks, some stabilizing jacks that are permanent and uh, that I won't have to do any adjusting. Once I get them up and leveled, I can lock them into place and it won't be a problem anymore. And I think I have enough stuff in my shop uh, to build all six of them. We'll build one together because I don't want to bore you with all six, but we'll build one together. I'll show you what it's going to look like. And uh, let's get started. I'm ready. I'm ready to be done with this situation. All right. Okay, I'm gonna need some round pipe for the main cylinder. And uh, this, this right here, this will work. This is like an inch and a half uh, black pipe, schedule 40. We'll use this right here. All right, I'm also gonna need some inch and an eighth all thread. I've got all kinds of different sizes here. I got some inch and an eighth right here on the bottom. <coughs> okay, this will work. We just need a small piece of that, but I need to make six of them, so I've got plenty here. So, all right, that'll work. Some inch and eighth all thread. You know what? I also need something that's gonna fit over this inch and eighth. This looks like it'll work. That piece is long. Yeah, this this looks like inch and a quarter, schedule 80. This inch and an eighth. All right, that'll work. We'll use this too. We're also gonna need a couple of inch and eighth nuts. I've got Inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, inch, seven eighths. I got a various bunch here. Here's a couple of inch and eighths. That'll work. I'm also going to need a piece of this uh, two inch by three inch rectangular tube. And this is uh, a three sixteenths wall thickness. We're going to use a section of this for the top piece. So that'll work. And finally, for the legs, I have this, uh, I have this three quarter by inch and a half rectangular tube I was using for a project. I finished that video's coming out soon. Uh, 
but I've got this stuff left over from that project. I almost threw it away and I'm glad I didn't because you always need it for something and here it is just a week later and I'm going to use it. So we're going to use this stuff for the legs. I've already got a 45 cut on one side so we'll just trim it up to the right length and uh, like I said I've, I've got six of them to make so I've got plenty of material left here so that'll work. Okay I was able to scrounge up everything here in the shop for the stabilizing jack. Um, I've got a few of them to make but we'll make one together and now uh, let me show you how I'm going to do it. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the main cylinder here and I'm going to cut it uh, um, about nine inches and that's going to be the main part of the cylinder there. Took it over to the Burr King, just kind of rounded the edges up a little bit, uh, but I decided that wasn't quite enough. I just wanted to get around it on the inside and the outside. I didn't want to have any sharp edges anywhere uh, that can get cut on. And then once that's done, I've got the lead screw. I uh, cut this at about 10 inches. Uh, Give me a little, a lot of uh, adjustability if I need it for a different project. And then back over to the Burt King. You know, those are super coarse heads on these things, so you can round them off anywhere and, and they're still good. All right, I clamped in the Vertex right here at the KBC mill, and I've got a uh, mill a slot in here uh, for the adjustable wrench to get in there so I can lock the, uh, the lock, locking screw down. And you can see right there, uh, and this is this is probably about three quarters of an inch wide or so. And just a simple little slot that I can get uh, my adjustable wrench in. Now the beauty about the Vertex right here is, uh, you know, I can switch this now to 180 degrees exactly, and, uh, and I'm exactly on the other side. Really cool tool to have here in the shop. Uh, a little bit of lubrication on there, and uh, just mill a slot right in here. And just like that, you know, that's done. Pretty cool. All right, now to cut the rest of the stuff here, I've got the legs, and uh, this was that uh, three quarter by inch and a half. And uh, I decided to cut these legs at eight inches. I thought that'd be just a good, uh, a good length. That's a good reason to hang on to all this extra material. You just never know when you're going to use some of it. All right, and this is that uh, inch and a quarter by schedule 80. This is just, I need a one inch piece right here, and that is just gonna fit over that lead screw. And then this part is the uh, two inch by three inch rectangular tube. Now the C-frame on the trailer is, uh, I believe, uh, a two inches or, or two, yeah, two inches, a two by six uh, uh, frame, something like that. So what the idea is, cut this thing in half, and then uh, this is gonna be part of the top assembly of the, of the jack and it's going to fit right around that C channel. Uh, that's my that's my plan anyway. Yeah, I got off my mark a little bit right there, but it's it's no worries. I'm going to be cleaning this up on the Burr King right here. I decided I want to taper the edges down a little bit uh, just for a you know a different look and softened up all the edges with the belt sander there. So. All right, here's all my pieces. This is what we need for the jack, uh, for the assembly. So uh, it's just time to get started right here. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is take the main cylinder and I've got the AC precision positioner here. And uh, this is a good uh, opportunity to use this. You don't use it all the time, but when you need it, you need it. And I'm telling you, it's a great uh, tool to have here in the shop. All right. I've got my nut on the top right here, and I'm just going to tack it in a couple places, centered up on that uh, tube. You know, put a tack there, and then the other side pulls apart, so I got this clamp to pull it in tight. And just like that, I'm going to chuck it up in the speed chuck right here. Yeah, I'm trying to get my settings just right, uh, get comfortable, be sure everything is going to work right. And uh, here it is. I got a little jig right there to help steady me and then uh, yeah I worked on the settings here a little bit and I think I'm fairly close I'd be able to go all the way around this thing I'm gonna make several passes around here all right and then this will be the next pass All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And the next thing I'm going to uh, use the positioner as well 
uh, to kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm uh, you know, going to grind these down a little bit. I'm going to get these welds uh, smoothed out. Um, I got good penetration of that nut in there, so I just want to kind of knock the weld down a little bit. And this is a great way to deal with the positioner. You don't have to move anything around, especially on round cylinders like this. This is a, a great setup. All right, let me get the position out of the way there. And now bring in the fab lock square and we're trying to do some assembly here. So what I want to do is I don't want this uh, cylinder to set flat on the ground. I've got a two inch spacer right here. I want it up off the ground. And uh, this is when I double check for plumb and now I'm going to put the legs on. Now I'm using these the three point system here on the legs. So three legs uh, evenly spaced around the cylinder at least as close as I can. And three legs versus four legs, uh, at least on three legs, it, it, if it's an uneven surface slightly, uh, they seem to level themselves out or stable themselves out much better than, than a four point uh, connection. It just doesn't seem to work as well. All right, once I got everything tacked into place and everything's nice and plumb, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just weld these out right here. Now I'm going all the way around, uh, front and back of this. You know, this is gonna be pretty strong. Uh, you know, I, I would not be afraid to use this as a jack sand on a car. I think it's going to be plenty strong. Uh, it can be used for a number of different things, but for what I'm using it for, uh, it's going to work out just fine. All right, so next is the top piece right here. And uh, like I said, this is just that round tube. And, and what that's for is I'm going to weld this all the way around. And then it's just going to sit loosely on top of the screw. Uh, on the top of the jack right there and that way when I crank it up it kind of just moves right into place and gets flush with uh, with the surfaces mating with all right with it all done it's time to assemble things together I just dropped the lead screw in right there to about there and then this is the lock nut I'm gonna run that down past the slot right there and then the top piece and there you go one stabilizing jack well, I got all six of them done, and they're all very, very much the same exactly. And so now it's time for some assembly right here. I'll show you, show you how this is going to work. Finally, going to get these things out of here. <laughs> I'm going to get those cleaned up, and you can see I just lower that down, and it fits underneath that C channel right there. I take my adjustable wrench. Of course, I got a couple smaller ones there. I need to go get a couple bigger adjustable wrenches. All right, and then just grab that lead screw and just crank it up. And I've got the tension on that pretty strong and then the locking screw right there and just locked into position and just like that I am not going to have any problems with this uh, jack settling out anymore but uh, hey I ultimately got all six of them in place uh, this one right here you can see a little bit different top on it you, can, you might see there's a pipe on running along the frame on the back side so I couldn't get that other piece on there but uh, uh, all the rest of them uh, they work really good I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching. I hope it's something that you can maybe make and use for yourself. Don't forget to check out the website at jimbosgarage.com. Torch lead holders, shirts, and apparel. Check us out on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.